Shalom is Levi Shore. Welcome back to Sweet Good Torah. We got Rabbi, Rabbi Mordecai Darvish of the Gates of Mordecai. Before I forget, I'm going to do it right at the beginning. If you like what you're hearing today, please help us out. Please subscribe, like, share, give us your comments. We really want to hear from you. We want to hear what you guys are thinking. We got a powerful one today, explosive. We're in Parsha Balak, heading into Parsha Pentecost. And I read, I learned this amazing Nesiva Shalom. And he says, when the Jewish people are learning Torah, when the Jewish people are doing mitzvos, when we have achdus, when we're together, nothing can touch us. Hashem is our magain Avraham, the shield of Abraham. The nations can't touch us. The anti-Semites can't touch us. But I'll tell you what, here's where it gets scary. When chas v'shalom, we give in to the physical pleasures, the taivas, the physical desires, we're going to talk about it, it's all around us, we're really weak, it's really dangerous. And if anybody needs to see proof of this, I know it's been, it's fresh, but, uh, you know, that Nova Music Festival, okay, it, it made us weak, it made us susceptible, it's dangerous. And I'm saying it not to, you know, not to call anyone out or make anyone feel bad but i'm saying it because it's dangerous and i don't want to see it happen again and i want to see us start to de-plug and get rid of these like you know very um you know you know okay you want to jump in here i'm going to load up some stuff soon what do you, what do you want to say no nah, it's uh, it's actually comforting it's like it's like if you do the right thing your parents will take care of you and if you don't then you know they'll uh, punish you and get you to understand to do the right thing so it's good. It's like I think every kid likes that. Every um, the kids today they they're they're very upset. I think because the parents they think uh, they, by letting the kid do whatever they want with no consequence is really good for the kid, you know, because they're you know they're having mercy on them. But I, I think the kids don't like that. and don't respect that either because <clears throat> there's no right or wrong. So it's like it's like I'm on the same level as the parent. You know, they can't tell me what to do. Cause yeah, Bob and Susie. There's no consequence for for not doing it. You know? Bob and Susie said, I can do whatever I want. Wait, what, you mean mom and dad? You mean your Abba and Ima? You know, who you're talking about? You know, Trey and uh, I don't know. I don't know what all the popular names are nowadays. Okay, so anyway, so here we go. So we're going to jump into this. Let's bring this up. So Bilam and Balak. Now, I know a lot of people aren't really worried about like attacks from wizards and sorcerers in this day and age. But I hate to tell you people, <laughs> we are surrounded by secret societies, we are surrounded by sorcerers. We have a country that was founded, you know, a lot of like Freemasons and Deists and Rosicrucians. Oh my, all this stuff. These people are attacking us. It's an info war. They're attacking how we think. They, they've really dented and destroyed, unfortunately, to some extent, the Imuna of the Jewish people, getting all these Jewish people to think, you know, that Hashem's not our God, Hashem's not our main protection. And, and that the Torah is not, you know, the unique gift that the Jewish people have to share with the world. And then thinking that Shabbos, Shabbat is not a Jewish holiday. Keeping kosher is not a Jewish thing. We're be, we're under attack. We've been under attack for hundreds of years. So Bilaam and Balak, they couldn't make a dent in us. Like Bilaam was, he knew how to curse other nations to make them, you know, to, to defeat them in war. And he came with Balak, who was another great sorcerer. And they wanted to destroy the Jewish people. And, and and Balak was doing something so dangerous. He wasn't offering up sacrifices to Avodah Zarah, to pagan gods. He was actually offering sacrifices to Hashem, to our God, to destroy us. And Bilaam wanted to curse us, and Hashem turned it all around and made his, his klala, his klalos, his curses into brachos, into blessings. But then Bilaam came up with a very evil plan. And we learn about this in Masek, the Sanhedrin, in the Gemara. And it says here, Amar lahem Eloheichem shall elu sone zima. And Bilaam gave this advice to Balak. And he says, their God, he says, the God of these people, the God of these Jewish people, what does Hashem hate? Sone zima. He hates physical immorality. Everything that some people are proud about nowadays you guys know what we're talking about. All of it. He hates unfaithfulness in marriages. He hates, you know, relationships outside of marriages. He hates all this immorality. I mean, and unfortunately, we live in a world right now. We're surrounded with it all. 
I'm just going to name it today. We're going to we're going to lay it out on the table. I mean, we're surrounded by the culture of Netflix and chill. We, you know, we're surrounded. I mean, people, you know, they, they, there's Pornhub. There, there's uh, OnlyFans. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, just it, it, like for years, you know, just like the, uh, you know, the the more innocent, you know, you know, was just like the the Playboys and you know and the, the Maxims and all all this. It's been around for so long, and we're just surrounded by it, inundated by it. And we got to fight against it. And this is what makes us weak. And this is what Billum's advice was. I mean, you want to jump in here? What do you What do you got to say? Yeah, that's what his advice was. After like they tried to uh, hurt the Jewish people through words, through sorcery, and through war, they couldn't. They saw they couldn't because they had a protector above them. And uh, so they went to the next best thing. What's the next best thing? Is when the Jews uh, break their relationship with God. So they become, they lose their shield, so to speak. They lose their protector. And uh, so that's, that's that's basically like, you know, like a woman, you know, she's married to her husband. And, uh, you know, as long as she's in the, the house, he protects her and everything like that. And she says, no, I want to go live in the streets. <laughs> and then she goes and lives in the streets. And all of a sudden she, you know, gets hurt by the people on the street. And, uh, you know, and then she looks around. She's like, why, why don't I have any protection? Why, why isn't my beloved is the guy coming to my rescue? Well, you left. You, know, you broke the relationship. I mean, one, one thing that's so sad for me right now is since the massacre on Shabbos of Simchas Torah, Shemini Atzeres, on October 7th, what I was hoping to hear, I was, I was hoping to hear, and Bizra Hashem, we hear it louder and louder from all the Jewish people saying next year, we're all going to dance with the Torah on Simcha's Torah. They tried to kill us last year on Simcha's Torah. They killed some of us, a lot of us. They took us captive into Gaza. Still, after nine months, there's still young Jewish women that are still captive in Gaza. And I hope that it'll grow louder and louder. Next year, we will all dance on Simcha's Torah. Next year, we will all dance on Simcha's Torah with the Torah. We will all dance. And unfortunately, what I've heard, and, and like very recently in Tel Aviv, right before the three week starts, they had another music festival celebrating the Nova music festival. We need to dance. They they perverted it in the movie Footloose. When I when I was younger, I didn't know so much about Torah. And there's a great scene with uh, Kevin Bacon. He's arguing against uh, John Lithgow, who's like the uh, the priest, uh, the, the pastor father of the girl, you know, his girlfriend. And he was saying, King David said, it's a time to dance. You know, it says, you know, it says, but, but it was, I didn't realize it. They were twisting it. Because what's really the time to dance? David Amela, King David, he was dancing with the Arna Kodesh. He was dancing with the, the Ark of the Covenant. He was dancing a dance of Kedusha, a dance of holiness, as he was taking the Arna Kodesh to the Harabayas, you know, up to the Temple Mount, where one day we would build the base of Mikdash, we would build the temple. So there's a dance of Kedusha, there's Simcha's Torah, there's Shemini Atzeris, there's a dance of holiness, and then unfortunately there's dances of Tuma, there's dances of, you know, of um, spiritual impurity, the dark side, you know, the Sif, the dark side of the force, you know, so there's different dancing, and then they really twisted it in that movie Footloose. Okay, right, so what, what Billum's evil advice is, he says, and it's very interesting here, there's a lot of insight into this, he says, they desire linen garments. Is that is that a big desire? You are you always dreaming about new suits and new you know <laughs> garments? So what what does this mean? It's very interesting. We were coming out of the midbar for forty years. We had this miraculous existence. We had a miraculous existence. Hashem, like you know, we we ate a, a, a bread from heaven, the man, the manna. We are drinking out of the beer Miriam, Miriam's well, this miraculous well giving water, water out of the rock. We we had we were protected by the Anani Kava, the clouds of glory. We were in a supernatural existence for 40 years, but now we are going back to the physical world. We are going to enter Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, with Yeshua bin Nun, and we're going back to the physical world. And now the physical desires were returning, and Bilam knew this. We are going to need new clothes. And what and what's really the what's the root? What's the root of all fashion, right? What's the root? What's the you know billions, trillions? Who knows how much they spend on fashion, you know, on clothes? But what's the root of it? What's the really desire of it? We want to look good. 
Why do we want to look good? You know, so in a in a level of kedusha, we want to look good so we can attract, you know, a, a shitta. We can, you know, we can we can meet, you know, a, you know, a woman to marry. But there's also fashion that's used for once again for tuma. Like people want to dress good, look wealthy, look good, look sharp, because they want it for physical immorality. And that's what Billam was saying here. They're going to need clothes because they're going into Israel, and they're going to have a desire, a taiva for clothes. And use that desire to twist it. Not, you know, not looking for, for shadukim, not looking, you know, for marriage, but maybe maybe can seduce them into looking for something else. And then this was the advice. So he said that you can you're gonna make hangings so they won't be able to see what's going on inside, and you're gonna put Hoshiv behind Zonos, Zonos, you're gonna put, you know, ladies of the night, prostitutes, you know, we're just gonna call it what it is today. We're going to put them inside. And we're going to make it look innocent. We're going to put old woman on the and an old old women on the outside and make it look innocent. Oh, it's very it's a family you know it's a family run uh, store as they say. You know we're going to give you clothes for your shaduchim and it's going to look innocent. But inside, they're going to they're going to try to get people to go inside with the young women inside the beautiful young women inside the the benos moab and seduce them with the taiva with the physical taivas. Uh, you want to jump in here or? Um, yeah, no, inside, inside what they found was <clears throat> these women, you know, um, that, uh, gave them some wine to drink. The, the Yerushalmi says, they give them some wine to drink. And once they had a few glasses of wine and then they started, uh, you know, asking them to be uh, a little promiscuous with them. And then they said, uh, well, if you want to do that first, you got to bow down to our idols. And uh, they said, "Wow, well, I'm not buying down. I'm not bowing down to no idol." And um, they said, "No, it's not a problem. All you have to do is defecate in front of it." Um, and they're like, "Oh, all I have to do is defecate? Yeah, defecate." So uh, they defecated. Actually, what they they, they gave them like these cakes to eat, um, <clears throat> and uh, they, they they would eat the cakes and uh, make them defecate even more. So um, they're like, if that's all I need to do. You know, they, they did it happily. Um, and then so it caused them to bow down to idols. And that that was the way of worshiping it, that by defecating in front of it. And then they became promiscuous with those women. So that led to 24,000 people getting killed. Right, whereas I think only 3,000... Yeah, well, why, I think it was a plague, you know. So only, I think, 3,000 people died um, because of the Chet Egel, the golden calf. And here, to show how dangerous this is, you know, in the physical immorality, 24,000 died in a plague, right? So we'll go through this quickly. You reference, we're going to bring up that midrash that you're talking about, and we'll go into it more. But here, so so this is Bilaam, Bilaam's advice. So Balak made, he made the hangings from the snow mountain, from the Hermon, until the Beit Yeshimos, and he sat the Zonas, the, the prostitutes inside, and the old women on the outside, and the young women on the inside. And at the time when the Jewish people were eating and drinking, were glad and going out to stroll in the marketplace, the old women, they would say to a Jewish person, they'd say, aren't you seeking linen, gar linen garments? So he would enter and he'd ask the price, and the old woman would quote him a price equal to its value. But the young women would say that they would quote him a price less. They would give, you know, <laughs> I want to make a bad joke here, but I want to make a big, I want to make a joke here, but there's another type of, you know, Jewish people, you know, when they see a good sale price, I know it's like a lot of anti-Semites say it, but, you know, you give a Jew a good sale price and it's a it's a horrible type of also, you know, and, and then the young women were drawing them inside a good price, you know, good price on the clothing. And they would do this a couple of times. And then after she would say to him, she said, you're like, you know, you're like a member of our family, you know, choose for yourself, whatever, you know, we're alike, you know, we're all family, choose whatever you want, whatever merchandise you want. She'd bring out a jug of the wine of Ammon and place it. And, and Ammon, what was that famous for? Where did the nation of Ammon come from? The daughters of Lot, when they fought that the world was destroyed, they gave their father Lot, they gave him wine to drink. And then both daughters, you know, had relations with the father with Lot. And then that's the nations of Moab and Ammon. And so she gave, you know, wine from Ammon and placed it near her. And we're all family, you know, and the, uh, the, the wine of the Ammon, it's just, this is not, you know, this is not Yayin Neshek. This is not prohibited to you. You know, this is it's kosher. This is kosher wine. And if you want to drink a cup of wine, and then once you drank the wine, 
Then the Yetzirah started. Then the Yetzirah started to burn. You know, you drink too much, and you know it's uh, it can get dangerous. And then he, he then he said he said to her he said uh, you know you know have relations with me, submit to me. And then she took out the idol and she worshipped it from her lap and she said worship this. And he said to her, says, "Am I not Jewish?" Now think about this. This is the guy that's drunk. He's about to engage in Znus, you know, in Zima and like, you know, like, you know, but, it, but this is farther. This is the farther step. It's one thing, you know, one thing sleeping with the Shiksa, but now there's a farther step. She's like, now worship the idol, you know, give it all up. And he's like, am I not Jewish? And she said to him, said, what is your concern? We we're asking you nothing more than to poop, as you were saying, poop in its presence. But he does not know that he didn't know that that's how they worshipped it. And we'll talk about it. What It seems so weird. Who worships an idol by pooping in front of it? And he says, I will not leave until you deny the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Torah of Moses, your teacher. And it says, here, let's see if I can find the Pusik here. And it says, um, when they came, so hine bo ba'al pa'or v'yinzeru lebeshes v'yihyu shikutsim b'yachavam. It says, when they came to Baal Peor, they separated themselves to the shameful item, and they became detestable like that which they loved. And they devoted themselves to, they, they pooped to this idol, and they desecrated the name of, you know, Hashem, Hashem, Hashem. And it says, V'yeshev Yisrael Shitim, and they lived in Shitim. And they talk a little bit about what does Shitim mean. Rabbi Eliezer, he says, she teams the name of the place. Rabbi Yeshua, he says that they are engaged in matters of shut, shut, shtus, of nonsense, of, of znus, of prostitution, and, and of odazara, you know, of idol worship. All right, what, what do you got? <laughs> it's a lot. I know, it's a lot of throwing at you there. Well, uh, that's the thing. A person gets uh, drunk or whatever. Um, it says that uh, according to the, you know, the Torah that the, uh, the first idol that they made, right? The golden calf. Says they didn't do it except for they wanted to engage in prohibited marital relations. Right? So if they if they cast off the yoke of heaven, the yoke of God, there's no boss, there's nobody telling us morality, what's good, what's what's bad, what to do, then everything's a, a free for all. So first they made the idol to say, Hey, you know, there's nothing above us, right? This is what we worship, and then so, so they rejected God, and then so if they reject God, then everything's free game. Same thing here. Seems like, <clears throat> you know, in order to engage in prohibited marital relations, um, the the women tell them first deny your God, you know, worship the, the idol, and then everything's fair game, right? And it seems like they they're hesitant at first, but hey, you know, for the the prohibition, <laughs> it's so good and tasty, you know, it's, 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 it's easier like that. So, you know, like they don't have a guilty conscience, first throw off any kind of yoke that you you might have, and then come, let's do this legally, quote unquote. Yeah, right. So, I mean, these right, these are all the tricks of the Yetzirah, the evil impulse, right, like you're saying. And, and these are the dangers, you know, and we'll talk about, you know, the protections, we'll talk about the protection of seat seat. We'll talk about the protection of the six constant mitzvah. So we'll go into our protection. Right, let's just let's journey on into these dens of uh, harlotry, and, and we'll go a little further into Las Vegas just to understand what we're up against, and then we'll talk about well, like the defense yeah, against the, whole, the dark arts. The, the whole Western world is designed for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the the, the, the slogan "sex sells" and advertising, all that stuff. Yeah. You know, because the, there is a definite. The, it's the strongest urge that they. Uh, mankind knows there is no stronger urge because you know um if if you if you give an appetite to any any you give a massage to any part of the body you know that that part will feel it individually but there's one place on the body where if that's stimulated the whole body gets stimulated yeah. and so and so it's 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 the most powerful thing that there is <clears throat> and so people are naturally drawn to it more than any other thing in the world yeah. You know, um, without going into like the real secrets of what happened in the Garden of Eden, yeah. but that was the original sin in its in its covered up sense. Like right, right. Totally so, th right. So, right. This. So, this is right. This is what 
in in a sense, right? You're saying it's the original, the chait of Adam Arishon, the, the sin of a Adam, the first man, right? This is what has brought death into the world. This is what's brought, you know, sickness and illness into the world. And this is really the root. It's the root of all evil, really. It, it's the, this is the root. I so we'll, we'll go into a little more, but yeah, but you're, you're what you're saying is really like we like we live in a world where you know you know you hear you know people have like oh whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Like we're surrounded by it. We're surrounded by this attitude. We're surrounded by, you know, like people trying to make it look all, you know, tempting and th that it's not a destructive thing. And, and it, it's destroyed people. It, it, it's really, it's a very dangerous thing, you know. So I so the Gemara goes on here and we'll, we'll go into the protection soon. But it says, Vitik uh, Rena Le'am Lezivche Elohechen. And they called Vatik Rena, and they called to the people to the offerings of their gods. These are offering to like, you know. So Rebbe Eliezer, he says, uh, Rebbe Lazar, they say Eliezer, I think it's Rebbe Lazar, Omer, Arumos Pigobahem, that they, they encountered Arumos, they encountered women without any clothes. And Rebbe Yeshua, Omer, Shina'asu Kulan Bale Karim, like they, they became like people experience, you know, like uh, Zara Levatala. They, the, the, when, a, when a man gives up his seed because of the lust, you know, because of the lust they experience. So, 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 and this, and this is what, as you're saying before, like this is the original, you know, you know, hate uh, Adam Arishon. So, what's what's the proper, right? What's the proper way, and why and why is this taiva so dangerous? Why why is there such a strong drive? for physical, you know, relations. And and it's interesting, in the Gemara and elsewhere, it says, like, they destroyed uh, the, the Rebbeim. I think it was during the times of the Tanayim, they they, they, they destroyed the Yetzahara for idol worship. And we see here also a strong desire for idol worship, because then it's like, you're throwing away everything, you're throwing away all reality, anything goes. And and they destroyed the, the Avodas. So there's no people, people, there's people that still worship idols, you know, unfortunately, but... But there's not a desire for it. There's not a desire anymore. But they tried to also get rid of this Yetzirah, of physical, you know, pleasure, physical relations. And they saw that the chickens stopped laying eggs. You know, like people weren't going to have children anymore. So they had to, like, you know, not not kill this Yetzirah. Because we need this drive in a way. Because this drive is important. And it can be used for kedusha. We talked about the, the the dancing of kedusha, the dancing of holiness, and the dancing of uh, you know not holiness. But people have relations. You know, if you have kedushin, you know, when a man and a woman, when a chassan and kala are married, and then the zera, the seed, it can it can be used in holiness, and it can bring bring children into the world. It can bring the greatest miracle that most people experience: children into the world. Or it can be misused, where this the, the zera is just wasted. So it's it's powerful and it's important, you know. And we need, you know, we need, you know, we need more generations. You know, the world can't stop. So it's very powerful, but it, it's something we need. What uh, what do you want to say on all this? Yeah, I mean, if everybody did what the other side wanted, then there'd be no continuation, and society would die off. The world would die off <clears throat> within a few generations. But if everybody kept it holy. I lost I lost your audio there. Okay, so while while we're trying to get your audio back, I'm going to bring up the uh, the six constant mitzvahs here. So let me share this here. So we're going to start talking about the defense against the dark arts, the defense against the um, you know these phys the physical desires and what protects us. We're talking about. Uh, I think I got your sound back. Okay, so here here so it's interesting. So me and uh, Rabbi Darvish, we actually we were roommates at uh, Eishat Torah, the yeshiva in uh, the old city of Jerusalem. So here we're going back to our roots here a little bit. We got uh, from Eish.com. and we'll talk about real quick. So one very powerful mitzvah that we have to fight against the um, the Yetzirah is um, is tzitzit. When you look at the tzitzit, when you look at the uh, the strings, uh, you know, of, of the tzitzit, the mitzvah, of the tzitzit. And we'll talk about the six constant mitzvah here, how it's related to that. But that's great protection against the Yetzirah. And it's great protection against this, um, you know, this Avera. This, do we have your sound back? Are you back? Or uh, Can you hear me? 
I hear you. Okay, good. Okay. So, so we're going to talk about these six constant mitzvahs, and these are great defense against falling into this immorality and great defense against the surroundings that we live in. So the first, the first of the constant mitzvahs is know there's a God. Know that there's only a Shem. Know that there's an infinite being. If you know that there's a God, what how's that? What do you what do you think? Like, how's that giving us great protection? That mitzvah? How it protects a person? Yeah. Well, if it, not, it's not enough to know that there is a God. It's to know God. Like, mm. we, 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 the problem is nobody defines the word God, and so everybody's left to their imagination. Um, but to know that, um, that there is only one power in the world, which we call the Ain Sof, the one without end, and if he's, you know, it is without end then that means it is everywhere. And to know that it is everywhere is a powerful thing because if it's everywhere, then I have to act correctly everywhere. As yes. if there's a camera on me at all times, as if there's an officer waiting for me at the stop sign or at the stop light, I yeah. can't just run it. I can't just do whatever I want. So obviously it's a, it's a very powerful thing to know. Um, and, and, and it'll, it'll keep you in line. It keeps a person in line with, to know they're always being watched and, even in their thoughts, their their speech, their uh, their actions, everything is being monitored, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, society's kind of trying to get 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 to that point with all the cameras around us all the time, and our phones, and like the Alexas in the homes, and and everything like that. Now they're trying to go under the skin, actually, you know, and uh, and plant stuff in our brains and in <laughs> our, you know our skin to to actually monitor what's going on on the inside. Yeah, so, really so what, uh, what God's job is. Okay, so we'll get to number two. So that's going to be a good segue to number two. So I just want to add this real quick. So right, Hashem is the Melech HaOlam, the king of the universe, this infinite being. And he's given the Torah to all mankind. And that's Hashem's laws. That's the laws of the king. There are laws. There's things you can do. And there's things you can't do. There's things that are tov. There's things that are good. And there's things that are ra, that are evil. So when people, like we saw, like what they what they were trying to do, Bilaam's evil advice and what the Zona was trying to do is, no, forget it all. Just if you poop in front of the idol, you're letting it all hang out. There, you know, nothing's wrong. Everything, everything's good, man. You know, free love. You know, you know, everything's good and groovy, man. You know, it's like, all right. So, so that's number. So number one is our first. It's our first. Um, you know, shield. You know, when we know that Hashem exists, there's laws. There's mitzvahs ase, positive mitzvahs, mitzvahs lo tase. You know, mitzvahs, you know, negative mitzvahs, don't do these things. So we know there's good and evil. Okay, so here's the one I think a lot of people, this is great protection. And I think a lot of people are following the trap, but this is actually idol worship, a vodazara. Don't believe there's any other power besides Hashem. And I think you were starting to go into this somewhat. Like, like what I what I see is we live in a day of like people are worshiping the golden donkey. People worship the Democrats. The Democrats are going to save them. People worship the golden Trump. Trump's going to save them, right? You know, like Trump's going to save them. And and like one of the funniest things to me is like the the people with all the conspiracy theories have been saying for decades they're 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 freaked out about people putting you know like the chips in their arms and on their forehead. And some of the people on the right think that Elon Musk is their savior, and he's the guy that has a company Neuralink that's actually starting to put chips into people. <laughs> You know, it's like these people are not coming to save you. I mean, I, I'm sorry if you if you're on the right or the left or whatever politician. The politicians are not coming to save you. We're down to our 10 minute uh, warning here. But what, what do you what do you want to say on this? Like, I'm not phased by the 10 minute warning. That's what I gotta say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, just don't believe in any other power because if you do, then there's there's two masters. If there's two masters and there's two sets of rules and. And you you start going down you know some other track that's incorrect. Yeah. All right, so the next the third of the, the six kinds of mitzvahs is like Hashem is one, and this is important. A lot of people get confused about this one. There's only one God. There's one infinite being, and there's you know a lot of people like to divide God up into three parts or multiple parts or two parts. But it, it, it like Shema Yisrael Hashem Elo. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. It's so important. That's a mitzvah right there, the Shema. It's so important. And in the Shema, we see the protection of the tzitzit in the third paragraph. But what's so important is that there's only one infinite being. 
There's not two sets of laws. There's not two sets of instructions. There's only the Torah and these other people that have created their own Torahs and, and non-Torahs and atheists like fantasies. You know, the, you know, the, there's only one God and you can't divide God up into parts. God doesn't have two opinions. You know, there's only one, there's only one opinion, one Torah, one people. And that's, and that's important. That's protection. That's a great protection. Yeah, there's no, uh, he doesn't have parts. That's, that's the, that's the biggest part of it is that he's one continuous entity, the unity of God. That means uh, he's in all places at all times, you know, um, seeing, hearing, knowing, there's not nothing that's outside his realm. And um, so, so we'll go to number four. So, right, there's a mitzvah to love Hashem. And this is interesting. And this changes a person's outlook on life. If you love Hashem, the more you're working on the mitzvah of loving Hashem, you start to reinforce that Hashem loves you. And you start to see more of all the good that Hashem's doing for you. And then this is a great protection because if you love Hashem, you don't want to let him down. Like when you love your parents, you want your parents' approval. You want your parents to love you. You don't, you want to do what your parents say to do. And loving the mitzvah of loving Hashem, we're, we're less likely to fall into the temptation uh, uh, you know, of Avera because we love Hashem. And, you know, and, and this is a great level. When, when someone loves Hashem, they don't want to let him down. They want to follow his mitzvahs. They want to do what he says, and they want to have a close relationship with Hashem. Yep. When you love something, you want to like feed it, or especially if it's a living entity, you want to do stuff that's pleasing to it. You know, you want to ingratiate yourself, so to speak, onto that thing that you love. All right. So then we we'll go we we'll go to number five here. So this is a tricky one. So fear. So this is what's interesting. You were talking about this before. We, we you know, that you had like the surveillance state. <laughs> But but there's even though like there's a bunch of like yahoos just watching it in like DC or whatever, watching all the surveillance of everybody. But the truth is it can awaken a real year as Hashem. Because like we, we mainly talk about this, you know, you know, in Elo heading up to Rosh Hashanah, that Hashem has, you know, the book of life and the book of death, you know, and we want to be engraved in the book of life. And there's midrashim that say that, you know, when a person dies and their soul stands before the Kisa Kavod, before Hashem's throne of glory. There's movies of his whole life that are played back to them. And either he's going to feel proud of all the good and the mitzvahs he's done in this life, or he's going to be embarrassed of all the averas, a, a sin a person's done in this life. But a person's going to have to honestly take a look at their own life. And they're going to have to see, how, how did I live? So when we have a year of Hashem, when we're afraid, I mean, sometimes the fear of a parent, the fear of a teacher, the fear of even the government, like the fear of, like if we're worried about the government, you know, looking at what we're doing on the computer or doing in our houses or doing at work or doing out in public, Hashem is, sees it all. He sees more than they see, understands to the bottom of our hearts why we're doing it all, but sees it all and everything's being recorded. Yeah, um, you have some kind of authority, you know, like you're not the boss of your God, <laughs> you know, some people like, I like to think that, you know, that they, they decide what, you know, the law should be, or, you know, they're the authority, the ultimate authority, or they just like, Oh, God loves me. God, it's all good. It's all fine. It's all, it's, it's, it's okay. He understands me and all that stuff. And then it's like, it's like all, all, all they see is the positive, but they don't, they don't think that there can be a negative. All right, they, they don't fear, so to speak, quote unquote, the negative or the negative consequence of doing the negative, and that's that's that that fosters an unhealthy relationship. Just like someone cheating, you know, it doesn't fear that that something uh, that that will impact negatively on his relationship with his wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. So I mean, a year can be a great protection. It can be an excellent. And then finally, the, the number six. So lo, you know, lo susuru akhare levavchem. And now we this is actually tied in with the Shema. We talked about the mitzvah, the Shema. We talked about the mitzvah, the tzitzit. So the tzitzit, when we look at the tzitzit, it can teach us not to go after our hearts and our eyes. This is where we really run into trouble. You get that, 
you know, you get that desire, you know, physical desires, people have thoughts run through their heads of, you know, like these physical desires. And then what we talked about before, it's all over the internet, it's all over billboards, it's all over, it's in front of your face sometimes. You know, it's like like society is not, not everyone's dressing modestly. We live in the age of the, uh, the hawk to a girl, <laughs> you know, like, and real quick, I, I feel, I feel like, I feel like she's maintained her fame because I think there's part of her that's like a nice girl. Like she's a nice country girl, loves her parents, loves her grandma. So she's not like all like this Vegas showgirl, you know, but, but it's still there. It's still part of our culture. And and like right the, the Netflix and chill the internet the, the, the you know some of the things we talked about when a person goes after these and and and, and there's a, and an important protection is shmiras enayim protecting our eyes from what we see look away turn it off don't look in these directions it's very important this is the greatest protection that's how it all starts that's how the benos moab the daughters of moab they lured us in you know they lured us in and then when you see then the desire becomes, you know, too much sometimes. All right, what are, we're, we're, all, we're at like under three minutes now. So Under three minutes. Here we go. I'm not phased. I'm cool under pressure. <laughs> all right, cool. Okay. <laughs> yes. Don't go after like your lower, your animal, your animal instincts, basically, which is your heart <laughs> and your eyes. Because they, they, you know, they feed, they feed your animal instincts. So if you're, if you, you know, obviously you could be attracted by them, but like, don't keep going after them. Like, go to tour, like, don't, go down that path like you'll get the bad thoughts push it out of your head you'll see the bad thing look away you know and then you could you could stay on the path but if you don't you start going down that path then it's a very slippery slope and it's uh it's hard to uh climb that mountain when uh you know you're slipping down it yeah yeah plan your next trip for the base midrash for sitting in the yeshiva learning torah open up torah book learn with a friend listen to torah videos I mean, Torah is what's going to save us. Torah, we're protected from the anti-Semites. We're not going to have another October 7th when the Jewish people are waking up and wanting Hashem's protection, using things like the six constant mitzvahs, the mitzvah of Shema, the mitzvah of Tziti, like all these mitzvahs Hashem's given us as our protection. And when we're attached to Hashem, even all the nations of the world can't harm us, as we'll see in the days of Gog and Magog. And we're going to talk about a part two that Hashem is sending us our greatest allies in this war. He's going to send us the experts in this department. He's going to send us Eliyahu Hanavi, who is Pinchas, who fights against his immorality, as we're going to see in a part two video. He's going to send us Mashiach ben Yosef, who's descended from Yosef at Sadiq, who you know, resisted the temptations of Potiphar's wife. He's going to send us Mashiach ben David. Who fought against these desires, you know, from coming from all sides. And we'll talk about the famous story of, of David and Bathsheba, David and Bathsheba. All right, one, one minute, under a minute. minute. Wrap Here it up, Nate. Wrap it up. <laughs> Just tell everybody subscribe, like, share, whether you like it or whether you don't like it. <laughs> we always, we always between us have a little uh, contest whether, where, whether we believe the video will do well or won't do well, <laughs> you know. Uh, Levy's the the ultimate optimist. I'm the ultimate <laughs> pessimist. Uh, so uh, let us know what you think. Whether you think the video will do good or won't do good, if you're still watching at this point. All right, Bizrat Hashem, we're going viral, but a viral of kedusha, <laughs> a virus of kedusha. Bizrat Hashem. All right, we yeah, hope man. to see you all back soon on Sweet Good Torah and the Gates of Mordecai. All the best.